Hey guys, welcome to this video on the C programming language. So in this video, I want to create a program that models the Collatz conjecture. So let's go ahead and get started with a description of what this program does, and then I'm going to go into more detail about what the Collatz conjecture is. So here we're going to have our description, and this program is going to model the Collatz conjecture. Okay, now the Collatz conjecture is a conjecture that concerns a sequence that was introduced in 1937 and named after Lothar Collatz, and I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, the conjecture is that no matter what value of n, where n is some positive integer, the sequence always reaches 1. Okay, now uh, this is a very very interesting problem because so far there is no proof that every positive integer value will eventually reach 1 but mathematicians have tried approximately 2 to the power of 60 positive integers and so far all of them have reached 1 alright so now let me explain to you how the Collatz um, conjecture function works uh, and so we're going to go over some of the rules so let's go ahead and type those out Collatz conjecture rules okay so the first rule is that you're going to start with any positive integer value that we're going to call n and this is, this is very very simple anybody can understand this um, this conjecture all right. So now the second rule is that if the value that was given is an even number, then the next term is half. Okay. So the next term becomes n divided by 2. Now, if the value n is an odd number, then the next term is that number times 3 plus 1. So the next term becomes 3n plus 1. And then last but not least, we will repeat this operation. Oh, I put all the caps here. Uh, repeat this operation for the next term okay and we're going to use that next term as the new input so maybe I type that here as well and use that as uh, the new input okay now let's give an example let's say we have our positive integer value 12 so n is going to equal 12, and then our sequence will look like uh, this here. It will first print 12, and according to the rules here, if our value n is an even number, then the next term is half. So the next term becomes n divided by 2, and our value was 12, so it becomes 12 divided by 2, which is 6. Now uh, we go back again. And we check to see if our value is even or odd. And it's even. So we do 6 divided by 2 will be our next term. And we get 3 for our next term. Now 3 is an odd number. So we um, look at our rules. And it states that if we have an odd number, then the next term becomes 3 times that number plus 1. So our next number becomes 3 times 3 plus 1, which is 9 plus 1, which is 10. And... 10 is an even number, so our next number becomes 10 divided by 2, which is 5. 5 is an odd number, so our next number becomes 3 times 5 plus 1, which is 15 plus 1, so it becomes 16. And 16 is an even number, so the next number becomes 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And 8 is an even number, so our next number becomes 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And now 4 is an even number, so our next number becomes 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And our next number uh, will be uh, 2 divided by 2 because our previous number was 2. 
So our next term is 2 divided by 2, and that is 1. All right, so we've reached 1 in this sequence of numbers. Now let's go ahead and, I guess, set up our program. So we're going to start off by including our library. We're going to include stdio.h, and we're going to set up our main function. So I have to return an integer value. I'm just going to return 0 here. Um, now let's go ahead and set up our colots function. And although I probably don't need to return any value, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make it return an integer value. So we're going to have int, and I'm going to call the function colots. And colots is going to take in an integer value that we're going to call n. That's going to be our positive integer uh, value. And now let's actually start writing a program for our function. Okay, so our function is going to be a recursive function because that's what makes the most sense to me when I'm thinking about it. And it's going to have a base case like any recursive function needs. So the base case is going to be when our value n becomes 1, assuming that every integer value, uh, every positive integer value that comes in this function uh, will reach 1 eventually. Okay, and for now, we'll just return the value 1. Um, I'm going to want to print every single digit here, so uh, every single digit in the sequence. So at the very start of our function, I'm going to print our n positive integer. And we're going to recursively put uh, the next term in our function. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create our rules. So colots conjecture rules. Okay, so the first one was a check for the positive integer value n to see if it was even. So if n mod 2 gives us a remainder of 0 or equals equals 0, then it's even. All right. And if it's even, then our next term becomes that number divided by 2. So I need a variable that I'm going to call next term. It's going to be an integer variable. And for now, I guess I will assign it a value of n. Um, I don't think that's necessary, but uh, just in case. And now we can have our next term become n divided by 2 here. Next, we have a, a else if statement because we want to check to see if our value is an odd number. And we can do that by saying else if n mod 2 gives us a remainder of 1 or is equal, equal to 1, then our next term equals 3 times n plus 1. Okay, and now we need a recursive case, which is where the function calls itself. And we're going to return um, colots next term. Okay. And I think that'll do it for our function. So let's give this a try in our main function. So first thing I'm going to do is create an integer variable that we're going to call n. And I'm going to set it equal to 12, like in our example above. And we're going to run our colots function and input the variable n. And let's see if we get this sequence like we expect uh, from the input 12 here. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, let's see. I got um, an error message because I did not put the t 
in next term here. So let's go ahead and put that and then let's run this. Okay, I did not put the T here either. That's just bad programming on my part. Alright, so now we're running the program and we see that we get the sequence that we expected, which was 12, 6, 3, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now let's set n equal to another number like 100 and see if it eventually reaches 1 as well. And we can see the sequence here. I'm not going to name it out, but yes, we do see that the sequence reaches 1 eventually. Let's try a thousand and see what the sequence looks like. All right, so we get um, a few more numbers here, but we see that eventually the sequence does reach one as well. And we'll see that this is true for uh, approximately two to the power of 60 positive integers. So um, I already knew that a thousand would definitely give me, um, or would definitely reach one in the sequence. So, thank you guys. Um, I thought this was a very interesting mathematical problem, and I thought it'd be fun to code up. So, I hope you guys enjoyed coding this with me, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comments section. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button for more videos. And I'll be sure to put a link of the code from my GitHub so you guys can download the code if you want it yourself and play with it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.